morning to you. You are watching Y254 and it is Y in the morning and as you know on Mondays it's about time we talk about governance in this country. It is youth and politics. My name is Hilda Wadidi and today in studio I have really amazing people, young people, leaders in their own field and we are going to be talking about African democracies with regards to the Kenyan chapter. So we're going to touch on three specific areas which is military interference when it comes to elections, the cost of elections, the tensions that happens during elections and also the role of political parties as vessels for democracy. So yes, before we delve into the conversation, I'd like all of them to introduce themselves so that we can start this. Asante Nisan, I've seen Anita here. It's good to see you again. Yes, yes, yes. So please, can we start with our panelists first? Sure, my name is Dear Gracious Magero. I am a practitioner in strategy and business development, very passionate about youth development, youth uh, economic and political inclusion. So I mentor young people and I'm also keen to, you know, disseminate the democracies in Kenya and Africa at large. Great. Well, uh, good morning. My name is Michelle Valentine Aloj uh, with a uh, legal background, currently working at a youth serving organization known as the Africa Youth Trust. Good morning, everyone. Mm -hmm. um, my name is Elseba Kokeo. Uh, well known as Sebi Cox, mm -hmm. I had to mention that. Mm -hmm. I am a youth enthusiast and a Kenyan chapter member. Great. Uh, good morning. Um, my name is Maina Karobia. I'm a man of many hats. <laughs> um, I'm the executive director, Center for African Relations and Development. I'm also the chairman of Youth for Ruto 2022. I'm also the founder and president of Youth and Governance Kenya. Great. Thank you. Okay, um, still the same, one and only, Ooh. Anita Kirote, <laughs> Youth Senate Kenya. Good morning, I'm Yves Bogatom. My name is Kevin Kieri, the National Youth Leader of Jubilee Party, and the President of Form Youth Initiative. Thank you. Okay, good morning. Uh, my name is Steve Maronda, also known as MC Marox. I'm a youth empowerment enthusiast, and I'm also CEO of Mitch Empire Kenya. Thank you. Yes, good morning. I'm Justin Yangono. I'm a political scientist, as well as uh, an executive director of uh, Youth for Leadership and Development in Africa, mm -hmm. as well as the founding president of the Youth Agenda Kenya. Morning. Mm -hmm. uh, good morning. I'm Omondi Franklin, mm -hmm. uh, polit uh, political science student, uh, student leader at Catholic University. Great. I greet you, um, Uncle Benjamin Ndiema Kirui uh, from the Catholic University of Eastern Africa, and uh, I'm the president Northwest Rift Students Association. I'm proud, and uh, recently appointed the political affairs consultant, Youth Appeal Kenya. Great. Good morning, everyone. My name is Matoke. Patrick Osebe from the one county, Nyamira, the youth governor, Nyamira County, the CEO, Compassionate Heart in Kenya. That's all. All right. Thank you guys so much for coming to studio today. I can see Kilamtu is ready for this, yeah? <laughs> yes, so let's talk about military interference. We've seen a lot of issues when it comes to elections in African countries. This happens in Malawi. It happened in Malawi. It happened in Sudan. It happened in Zimbabwe. So we'd like to understand when it... It also happened here, by the way, yes. At some point, I think it was the year 1992. It also happened here. When it comes to the military, when it comes to interference, does it mean that our electoral bodies are really independent if we are fearing military interference well um in my understanding i would say the fact that there is interference mm -hmm. may not necessarily mean that we are independent in you know in terms of our electoral bodies mm -hmm. however when you talk about interference it could also be in a number of you know aspects could be either providing security mm -hmm. you know for the process mm -hmm. or interfering with the process mm -hmm. case in for example in uganda recently where you know we felt like the military and the police was used to interfere with the process as mm -hmm. opposed to provide you know security for the process mm -hmm. so i feel like it's per context and case by case depending on what is the role of the military and the police state in the specific process yeah i wouldn't i wouldn't really say uh, 
that military, in, I wouldn't call it military interference, mm -hmm. but maybe military participation. Mm -hmm. Also, just like my colleague has said, it depends on, mm -hmm. on the country that you're talking about and mm -hmm. what they're addressing at that time. Mm -hmm. If you look at Kenya, for instance, mm -hmm. we wouldn't say it's military interference, but majorly it's for security purposes. Mm -hmm. So you can't say it's military interference mm -hmm. to that extent. Yeah. Okay. Um, According to me, wait, wait, wait. Oh, sorry, uh -huh. uh, I forgot. Uh -huh. um, used to the lapel. <laughs> um, anyway, um, according to me, military has no business interfering with an election because there are various police angles, mm -hmm. and there are, there is a police wing that should interfere with, should be involved in elections, providing security mm -hmm. only. But military is mostly for external aggression so when military is involved and uh, this is a very big issue for me because when you look at the history of nigeria and the military struggles and coup d'etats mm -hmm. it comes as a result of this also ghana with jj rollins and the likes it's very fundamental that military stays out of politics mm -hmm. and why it's a big issue in uganda is because you know that uh, in uganda military are even represented in parliament which means that as bobby wine is speaking uh, next one is like, wh what did you say? A military member of parliament mm. is represented, mm. and uh, that cannot happen. So for me, military is a no-no. Let let them deal with external aggression. As for internal aggression, we have various arms of the police that can provide security. Military is a no-no. So can we say that the electoral bodies are not really independent if the military is involved? Um, they are, but I think this is a for uh, an arm of the belongs to the arm of the executive mm -hmm. under the Ministry of the Interior, so it's a separate thing altogether. Mm -hmm. IBC mandate is strictly on election, and they can provide their own security because anyway they have an over bloated budget mm -hmm. that the auditor is complaining about. Mm -hmm. They still don't account for money. Mm -hmm. They still do wrong procurements. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Uh, I want to be the devil's advocate mm -hmm. and say that. Uh, Sometimes the, the reason as to why, as my sister rightfully said, mm -hmm. the reason as to why we have military participation in elections is that uh, some of these elections are being influenced by foreign nations. Mm -hmm. And that's when you find uh, states, African states, they try and um, opt for military participation so that uh, maybe they can consolidate or they can bring up, they can... Um, uh, protect their sovereignty. Mm -hmm. Case in point, when you see uh, the Kenyan participation of the military mm -hmm. in 1982, mm -hmm. it was more of, uh, the 1982 question was more of U.S. interference with Kenyan political system. Mm -hmm. And that's why we had military participating in, in the elections. Mm -hmm. When you f go to the Bamba case, mm -hmm. the reason as to why you find military so much active mm -hmm. is because uh, the Western powers, they are so much interested with politics of the mm -hmm. And the same case is happening in Uganda. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I, I might say that uh, sometimes the reason as to why we find military participating in uh, African elections is because they, are, they want to protect their sovereignty as, as independent states. Okay. And uh, as much as we, we might be uh, so much against military participation in our elections, mm -hmm. we must also ask ourselves, will we, will we uh, put away the military participation at the altar of sovereignty of our African states. Because I also think... Okay, okay please, you. can you give people <laughs> an opportunity to speak? Just, um, to, just okay. to echo into what he's saying, uh -huh. I think uh, I wouldn't want to deter military completely from our elections because mm -hmm. of uh, the military bulge into elections is actually to, to promote the sovereignty populace. I mm -hmm. mean, we want to, the international community has raided our, our, our well-being in mm -hmm. terms of elections. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the moment we put our military out, it means we are only letting, we are only dependent on them. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the military is there to provide security mm -hmm. if it's not interfering with the elections. All right, I think we should move away from the military now for just a minute so that we can Maybe give just everybody... to sum it all up. Okay. We should, not forget, we should not forget that most African states are democracies. Mm -hmm. Out of the 55 recognized uh, states, f uh, if the African Charter on Elections, Democracy and Governance is anything to go by, mm -hmm. most African states are democracies. Mm -hmm. Also, let's not forget that um, Kenya is a democratic state and the general elections is a big thing. Mm -hmm. So we cannot say that we cannot involve the military in our general elections. Because also not only do we need the military to, sub to, to, to protect us from foreign interferences and all that, mm -hmm. but you see um, 
if we have the military in our general elections because we also normally have international observers to come and observe the elections not just in the country but generally in all states mm -hmm. so we cannot say that it is just a police force thing mm -hmm. the military has to be involved Anita, it appears, it appears you are alone when it comes to the military. Yes, and, and um, yeah, it's okay, but I'll, cite, I'll close by citing Paul Collier. He mm -hmm. writes bottom billion and he explains why there is conflict in Africa. Mm -hmm. And he talks about the military regime. Mm -hmm. You have to keep military at okay. a certain point. It's the reason why even the Auditor General cannot audit the military, you have, the government has to keep military happy. That's the fact. There is a relationship between the government and the military. Yeah. Military cannot smell yeah. anything to do with elections in Kenya. If you think it's a joke, look at all the history of dictatorship in Nigeria, Sania, Bacha, and the likes. Mm -hmm. These guys were not jokes. By 28, uh, 28 Li Liberia had Charles Taylor and the likes. And these guys were from the military. Mm -hmm. Military should still, for me, it's it's a, a very serious case because I've been studying mm -hmm. interference of military in mm -hmm. the election, especially coup d'etat and how yes. it starts. Yeah. So how do you limit to what extent? And then let's not forget, case in point, Zimbabwe with Mnagangwa, mm -hmm. we saw loss of lives. Mm -hmm give and take whenever military is involved well, there's rape cases yeah. there's loss of lives mm -hmm. there are women women like there's no economic development at a certain point even as before there was the handshake mm -hmm. and there was the uh, there was stagnation of businesses yes. i mean how how do you limit how do you not cross the line i'm glad you talked about businesses because <laughs> our next point is the cost of elections which i'd also like uh, uh, uh the rest to also be able to comment on so when it comes to the cost of election in Kenya, we are the second highest spending when it comes to elections. Afghanistan is the first one. But for Afghanistan, their case is a bit different because their soil is very fragile and they have a lot of conflict and the people who are vying for those seats need very serious protection. So that's why it costs them that much. But for us here in Kenya, Hmm? The story is a bit different. What can we do to mitigate the cost of elections? What can we do about this? Yeah, that's a very good question. Can mm -hmm. I just... Um Sum it up. Mm -hmm. First, Anita, to some extent, I agree with you mm -hmm. on the military aspects. Uh, there are guidelines and frameworks that all of us have to like mm -hmm. consider. And mm -hmm. when you talk about, for instance, the African Charter on the <coughs> Elections and Governance, mm -hmm. it's actually providing kind of a regional framework and guideline. Mm -hmm. It's just that some nations have not taken keen interest in that to mm -hmm. actually see how they can not just like sign but ratify and actually abide by that. Okay. But coming back to the cost of elections, mm -hmm. the case in point of Kenya. I usually see after every four to five years, the IEBC or whatever commission is in power, then pressurizes itself and the country and every stakeholder in the political process mm -hmm. to start the civic education, mm -hmm. which in my opinion should be a continuous process. Mm -hmm. If it will be a continuous process, they would engage, for example, the Kenyan chapter on ACDEC, uh, Youth Agenda is here, mm. among other players, yeah, the CSOs, so process. that then, you know, the civic education on elections and the governance process once it is continuous, it will be cheaper as opposed to hiring people every six months to election to rashly run this. So I feel like that is one key aspect that the IBC needs to consider. That's a solution. Yes. Great. All right. Yeah, yeah. Maybe just to add on to what he said, you know, um, Michelle, can we just wait for uh, one minute, please? Can we hear from Kevin? Okay, sure. okay. Well, uh, I would like to say that uh, the problem we have, not only in Kenya but Africa, is that we are very good in coming up with laws, but the problem is implementation part yeah. is the problem because if we say about uh, election and the money that we use mm -hmm. we have we, ha we have these laws being capped in the election sector that limits the certain amount of money that should be spent mm -hmm. but what we see is that we as kenyans we, are, we are, our problem is we are greedy for money mm -hmm. even as the voters even us as the voters mm -hmm. we want to be given something so that we can vote for a certain person mm -hmm. a, a certain person who is who, who may be very good in leadership mm -hmm. may not be voted for because he or she lacks money mm -hmm. and for instance the challenge usually affects us us as youths mm -hmm. because where, where, for instance where do i get 30 million to campaign to be an mp mm -hmm. right now i don't i am not employed mm -hmm. and my business is not booming mm -hmm. the government is not supporting my business mm -hmm. where do i get such money and i want to actually lead, lead the people and present my views in, let, let's say for instance in parliament Okay. So I think we need, as my brother said, we need a thorough mm -hmm. civic education, not only even when, when it's near the election period, even before and uh, as in a continuous process whereby we try and educate the youth, not only the youth, and, but the people at large that you should not vote for maybe money. Was These are certain things that we should do. 
Wasn't there an act recently that was passed when it comes to campaign dealing with the issue of how much you can spend yes, when it comes to campaign? Yes, yes. yes. Goes, but what I'm saying, our problem is the implementation because the same people who are coming up with these laws are the same people going with more money on the ground. Wow. Because they want to retain that seat for their future and greedy purposes. Oh, yes. okay, okay. Now the governor's okay, youth agenda. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. Let's, let's hear. Yes, democracy mm -hmm. is expensive, mm -hmm. but uh, at the same time, we must be reasonable. Mm -hmm. In my own opinion, mm -hmm. elections in Kenya is, is very expensive, yes? Yes. But uh, <coughs> I think we should uh, sit down as a country mm -hmm. and come up with various resolutions. Mm -hmm. Number one, elections are emotive. Mm -hmm. So it needs to be conducted in a manner that uh, each and every person will feel satisfied at the end of the day. And uh, in the elections, we have various partners on board, mm -hmm. like the electoral body, mm -hmm. the political parties, mm -hmm. the various non-governmental organization, NGOs. Mm -hmm. They need to come together mm -hmm. so that they, they can have one agenda mm -hmm. to, uh, to facilitate mm -hmm. the process of elections. Mm -hmm. But what we are seeing is duplication roles, like uh, IBC is doing this, the same, the political parties are doing that. Oh. And also, in relation to that, is the IBC commissioners. Mm -hmm. We have having IBC commissioners in office who are full-time in, in the five-year period. So what we need to have, to have is uh, part-time commissioners mm -hmm. who will be working for uh, IBC because we are having a secretariat on board whose main mandate is to implement various policies at the end of the day. Wow, thank you for that. All right. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. Go ahead. Okay, uh, it's a fact that elections uh, in Kenya are expensive. Mm -hmm. But if I would ask, why would we want to copy the so-called first-class countries mm -hmm. to use the kind of gadgets that they use today mm -hmm. uh, to run our elections? Mm -hmm. Yet we are not even kind of experienced mm -hmm. to use some of them. You see, these are some of the things that make us spend much in the elections because mm -hmm. we will want to educate everyone. Apart from the voter education, that is only done when the elections are are almost approaching, mm -hmm. you see. Because mm -hmm. uh, I feel that if all this can be implemented and done at uh, different occasions, like during maybe in the schools or something, mm -hmm. uh, all this cash that we spend for the voter education, uh, getting the personnel, uh, getting the equipments, and also if you check on the on the statistics uh, about the, the military, mm -hmm. uh, also the amount of cash that is despite to them mm -hmm. to bring about the peace and everything during election mm -hmm. is so high. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yes, uh, I also wish to give my submissions. Uh, first and foremost, we are focused on elders group and the country that is. But when it comes to political uh, positions, uh, we forget, we tend to forget uh, what is expected of us. In addition to what Mr. President here said about dupli duplication of roles, I eh, also wish to add uh, on that by saying that the issue of referenda. Currently, like the case of la the last referenda that we had, it cost, it did cost uh, around 12 billion, I think 12 billion. Mm -hmm. And when you look at our last elect general elections, uh, we used around 49 billion. Mm -hmm. So when you try to figure out the amount of money that we are using, like for the case of the 49 billion, which translates to 25.4. Uh, Benjamin, come on, make it quick. Mi yeah, yeah, million, 25.4 US dollars for every individual. So what I'm just trying to put out clearly is that we should try and do away with the referenda and in addition to the duplication of roles. Okay, even the referendum now has come up. Goodness. <laughs> Patrick, please, I want you to comment on this cost of elections, the last one. Then the rest will comment on other things. No, 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 no. Comment, oh, comment. The last one, uh, uh, mm -hmm. somebody has not talked, but mm -hmm. I want to say that the elections are very expensive mm -hmm. and we are the problem. Mm -hmm. How? One, we want to hire ballot papers from mm -hmm. other countries so that mm -hmm. we can use the vote. Why don't we produce them in Kenya yes. so that um, I want to be specific Kenya mm -hmm. so that we can lower the cost mm -hmm. of production, the cost of transportation, the cost of all that. Another thing, the budget is exaggerated 
the reason why is, is, it is exaggerated it is because there are some people who want to loot through the process. Now they link with the the, the, the IPC and the mm -hmm. people who are uh, in, in, involved so mm -hmm. that they can loot through that process. That mm -hmm. is why you find that the cost is very high. But mm -hmm. They don't want to be transparent. They don't want to be accountable for it. Mm -hmm. That's why even in the general elections, they were not able to open the servers because they knew whatever that they have done, <laughs> it is not logic, mm -hmm. it is not realistic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is the problem we have in Kenya. Mm -hmm. All right, please, please, let me hear from me. If you want to talk about it, just go ahead. Yes, um, as a driver of African Charter on Democracy, mm -hmm. Election and Governance, mm -hmm. I would like to say this about uh, elections. I think if we, this is where the need to sign, ratify, and domesticate this document comes in, mm -hmm. because it, if we abide by the 2010 promulgated constitution. Mm -hmm. I think the, 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 the whatever he's talking about, mm -hmm. uh, corruption, the personal mm -hmm. interest will go down. Mm -hmm. The problem is we come up with uh, unconstitutional uh, rules mm -hmm. of how to work out our ways to the office without thinking of other people. Mm -hmm. That's why the cost of uh, elections comes or, or heightens mm -hmm. to that level. Mm -hmm. if, we are in, if we have the integrity enough mm -hmm. or abide by the constitution or by the African charter, mm -hmm. then I think uh, we are on the right process. Hey, African Chatter. Hey. Maybe just to clarify on that. <laughs> All right, please yeah, go you ahead. Keep, you keep hearing us talk about the African Charter on Democracy, Elections, and Good Governance. Mm. Well, this is basically a document by AU member states, which Kenya signed mm -hmm. in 2008, mm -hmm. but has not ratified yet. Mm -hmm. But it basically talks about uh, the, eth the ethics of good governance, human rights, rule of law, and uh, electoral processes and good practices. Mm. Um, we, we as members of the ACTE Kenya chapter feel like um, it is high time the government took up this discussion because what is the purpose of us having signed the document but we've not ratified it? Because if we ratify the document, we'll be bound by the provisions in the, in the charter, in the treaty. So that means uh, on matters regarding accountability, we will be able to hold the government accountable because if we have an active citizenry, then that means we can tell the government, we know that this is supposed to happen, mm -hmm. but this is not happening. What are you doing with regard to that? And then also that is why we are looking at it from the youth perspective because mm -hmm. as a youth in Kenya, we are all aware that we have the numbers. We have a very big population of uh, Kenyan voters or people who actually have a say mm -hmm. between 18 to 35 years of age. Mm -hmm. So what are we doing with it? Let's not make elections and electoral processes only about the general elections. Mm -hmm. Then after that, there is nothing else to say. We need to know, people need to know, the youth need to know that it is their right to actually hold the people accountable and they're actually legislation for them to follow through, for them to know that you can actually hold the government accountable if they do not deliver. Mm -hmm. All right, great, mm -hmm. great, great. I hope you guys have heard about this document. Great, great. Okay, I think it's because of me here in the fire. Yeah, I my, cannot see you. <laughs> Kevin is <laughs> lucky. <laughs> okay. My view. <laughs> okay, uh, I'd like to talk of mm -hmm. about this thing in this way. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, uh, we Africans who can say Kenya for that matter, mm -hmm. we are not logical. Mm -hmm. uh, we lack logic. Mm -hmm. We are very wrong in doing some things like budgeting because. I want to budget. Mm -hmm. I know that uh, in any, this thing is being used, uh, the amount of money being used here mm -hmm. is, let's say, 10,000 for instance. Mm -hmm. But I want to make it 20,000 mm -hmm. because I know that this other 10,000 will remain in the pocket. That is see? just corruption. So that's a corrupt, yes, our corrupt nature that is making us mm -hmm. be in that situation. Okay. And then talking about logic is a matter of why should we, okay, I'll record the statement by Matoke there, mm -hmm. uh, the, the issue on us manufacturing our own materials mm. for elections. Solution. And uh, mm -hmm. in, that, in that case, mm -hmm. uh, this will be also creating jobs. So we'll be like uh, beating uh, two, uh, uh, two, two birds in one stone. With stone, you see. So as much as we are working on elections, mm -hmm. because this is a thing that comes in uh, after every five years, mm -hmm. maybe by elections and mm -hmm. the referendum and so, mm -hmm. but we can have a factory here mm -hmm. doing such materials, mm -hmm. and at the same time, it's a, a offering jobs, a problem that we are, we are facing as youths, mm -hmm. we are facing as a country. So, mm -hmm. in, in short, we should like be logic, mm -hmm. we should at least tama mm -hmm. this uh, being, uh, having last for money, should mm -hmm. at least 
produce. At least we need to know. we need to have more integrity yeah, in our dealings. It's, it's a matter of uh, okay. being, uh, having integrity. All right. So <laughs> as much as we are working on the social nature mm -hmm. of ourselves, so mm -hmm. I understand everyone has a religion or a god or something mm -hmm. supernatural believing in. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure that supernatural being mm -hmm. is has teachings mm -hmm. that you should at least take care of the other person. So. We, we should, should be our neighbor's yeah, keeper. Neighbor's okay, keeper. all yeah, right. Now that now that someone brought up democracy, yeah, I just had democracy here. When it comes to democracies, especially in Kenya, this was driven by political parties. Sindio. So we have an issue in Kenya where political political parties are formed only with the purpose of elections. Then after that, they fall apart. Can I hear from you what you guys think about this? Anita, you look like you really want to say something. <laughs> Also have um, uh, mm. No, it, I just had a lot of comments on what he said, but mm -hmm. uh, I'll bypass that. <laughs> we shall have coffee over that. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> in Kenya, it's obvious, yeah, political parties are vehicles of ascending into power. Mm. I can cite a few examples. Uh, mm -hmm. Reviving of TNA, now mm -hmm. I don't know, it's called Kazina uh, the National Alliance on what <laughs> with a the theme of Kazina Pesa with uh -huh. money as its symbol. Mm -hmm. We have the fractioning Tanga Tanga, Kieleweke. Yes. We have reviving of a uh, democratic party. We have Munya and PNU. We have all, all these parties. But uh, one most important thing I'd like uh, I'd like to say uh, is we should look at um, and she echoed it just before elections, the period before elections. What happens? Because it happens every time. Yes. Even come to two thousand and two, if you remember, formation yes. of NAC. Yes. Everybody fragmented their party. Yes. Uh, came together yeah. immediately when Raila uh, saw like this thing is not working. Mm -hmm. He broke off from his own party ODM. Mm -hmm. Uh, Kalonzo, ODM, Kenya. Mm -hmm. and, and the cycle continues and the cycle continues. Mm -hmm. So I think we need, um, because we're also talking about Africa, we need to yes. look at other African democracies. Mm -hmm. We need to look at even young parties like EFF by Malema. Mm -hmm. He broke off from, from ANC, a very strong party that has grown. And everybody comes from ANC, then now they form their own fra fractions. Mm -hmm. We need to look at ZANU PF from Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. We have Nelson Chamisa, he also broke off and he has his own strong, solid thing. Mm -hmm. So we need to have parties that have structures, parties that are there to the act. However, still in parties, I don't understand why the the woman in charge of political parties is still in acting capacity after all these years. <laughs> How is she supposed to look at these uh, 66 or 67 parties that are being formed mm -hmm. when she's in acting uh, capacity? Mm -hmm. So we need to strengthen the political parties uh, act and we need to to, reinstate, to, to to remove, to drop the acting and mm -hmm. let her do what she's been doing anyway for all these years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Dear gracious. Okay, so um, I'm very happy with what Anita brings, and this is a comparison mm -hmm. and uh, you know sharing of best practices across nations. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy that you're actually using African nations mm -hmm. to be specific. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is actually a platform that you know African Charter on Democracy and Elections and Governance is providing, because the 55 states, in one way or another, actually agreed on this. Not every state has pushed for the ratification, yes, but where we are is a good time to have conversations. And ACDEC actually pushes for a youth participation. One of the key aspects we want to achieve using this platform is where, as young people and as you know, existing democracies at different levels in Africa, how can we share the best practices? What can we learn from South Africa, for example, from you know, right now 44 seats for Malema, where are we headed? You know? Mm -hmm. uh, he did probably he'll be a president, not yet. Yeah. What can we learn from Uganda? Recently, when we were having the East African chapter, so there's an East African chapter, Kenya, Uganda, and Tanzania, uh, and we had a convention in Uganda, the Ugandan youth were actually able to petition and push publicly for the speaker to consider a motion to reduce the cost of you know elections for the young people mm -hmm. and cut it down. Mm -hmm. And I think that is the kind of voice we need using this platform. So calling upon everyone to actually come together with the key lessons, mm -hmm. regardless of our different you know organizations and mm -hmm. factions. Yeah. Architect provides that platform for all of us to start thinking of what can we do as youth. All right, I like that. And now I'm hearing solutions. <laughs> good, good, good. Let's hear my... I, I want to tie up this question with the previous question. Yes. You said that um, there's one story we have expensive Elections and the reason is why we have uh, these issues of political, political parties, parties yeah. is because we have politicized our economy. Mm -hmm. When you have, and I, I want to compare the elections of 2013 mm -hmm. and the election of 2017. Mm -hmm. 2017, we had 50,000 aspirants mm -hmm. from president to MCA. That tells you everybody is fighting. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> to be in a political space mm -hmm. so that he or she can make money. Mm -hmm. And that is actually a problem. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to propose this. The reason as to why our, <coughs> our political parties are personal vehicles that are meant to promote people from their current status in politics <laughs> to another status. Mm -hmm. And I've been proposing a radical way of de dealing with this. Mm -hmm. That uh, today we have political parties being funded by states. Mm -hmm. So everybody is fighting to come up with a political party mm -hmm. so that he can get funding from, <laughs> from, from the exchequer. Kevin, so, is that correct? No, that's not lie. No, no, listen. Anita. No, no, no. Listen, listen. No, listen. Listen. No, listen. Political parties have been funded by state, right? No, not all. Only not all, but two. But that tells you, but that tells you that there are still political parties. <laughs> so I've been saying, so that we can strengthen and we can have strong political parties, let political parties be mem be owned by members, mm -hmm. not individuals. Mm -hmm. And that is by having political parties not funded. Mm -hmm. Regardless of how many members of parliament you have in mm -hmm. parliament, mm -hmm. let them be members based on the activities of our political parties be run by the contributions and donations made by members in the party. Let All me right. just build on that. Well, we don't have so much time, guys. Okay, so can okay. we please be really quick because I really want uh, our, our, our governor over there to say something. He okay, looks okay, like okay, he wants okay. to come out of his seat. Yeah. <laughs> Not very happy. The problem comes in when we, we have in every uh, party, we have uh, the, 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 the main character. Mm. That is the national character. That's where party the problem comes. Okay. There is one. Even if we are strong or, mm -hmm. or strong or mm -hmm. weak, mm -hmm. but and our other members, mm -hmm. like now if, if we have a political party like Matokes, mm -hmm. we have the Matokes as the governor and the president, the governors, that is where the problem comes in. Mm -hmm. I see. The reason why I'm saying so, these we require these people to one, have an office, mm -hmm. two, have the funds, mm -hmm. two, to fund all these people, mm -hmm. and then if and if somebody is weak, mm -hmm. you just go there because you are seeing something mm -hmm. in the political party. Mm -hmm. I'm fighting so that I get something, even if I don't deliver, even if I don't go for it, mm. I get that something and get out of there. That's the problem that we have in the political party. Something that I've not heard anyone say. Yes. Yeah. Well, now you can go ahead. I don't agree with the how. Generally, I don't agree with how political parties conduct themselves. Mm -hmm. But needless to say, we need to give credit where it's due. I don't know about other people's political parties, mm -hmm. but for my political parties, it actually does the most to get to the youth in with regard to youth uh, awareness creation and uh, involvement, engagement, and participation, and also just economic empowerment. But that is besides the point. What I'm trying to say is when we get opportunities to be in political parties, I know many people, many student leaders who start from schools, then get into political parties and still they get integrated into the same system, which yes. does not run with the best interest of the youth. Sure. Because if you look at the secretariat of these um, political parties, most of the people that are at the secretariat or the leadership roles of that, they're not young people. So as a youth, who are engaging in politics, we need to know that we need to have the best interest of the youth at heart. Because today I could be the member of parliament, and tomorrow I might not be the member of parliament, depending on whether I give uh, deliverables to my constituents or not. So with that in mind, I need to be able to create a favorable, conducive environment so that even if I'm not in a position of power, still the youth are at an advantage to see that this is actually working for me or not. Not get selfish. Yeah. Well, I, li I, I like her. I like her. I like her opinions because she really makes sure she reminds us that we need the youth. <laughs> she, she brings us back to the youth. It's about time. Yeah, it's about time we conclude this. Wow. I think we need to do a second a chapter time. next week. Yeah. Will you guys come next yes, week? Yes. All of you. Mina, you are not saying yes. No, I'll come. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's Ali. Yes. Yeah. yeah. We will continue. Mm -hmm. However, it's about time we conclude. Please. Thank okay. Fine. Um, our mind is on uh, about funding of political parties. Only two parties qualify for funding, and it's that uh, parties that get 5% of the votes, which mm -hmm. makes sense because 
I told you that six political parties, some didn't even field one candidate, which means they are not serious. Uh, parties, some parties are not complying to the political party act. Mm -hmm. They don't have a NEC, National Executive Committee. They don't have youth wing. They don't have women wing. All these are requirements by the political parties act. Mm -hmm. Yes, so for me, uh, Caribbean people must, political parties must be funded and there must be a certain criteria about that. And this came, <laughs> sorry, and this came as a result of uh, preventing <laughs> external interference with our political parties. Okay. Where will the money come from? Okay, okay, Where guys. Wait, we gotta stop. <laughs> Kelly, we have to stop. Okay, I'm so sorry. I, okay. Next week, if you guys don't come, I'll be so pissed. So, <laughs> no, no, Kevin, I will, they'll just, you know what they're going to do, right? So, yeah, so it's about time we conclude this, but we'll, next week we're going to be together, yeah? Oh my god. My call to action. Call to action. Call to action. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Well, uh, my party is short. All I'm saying is, as an elected official, or maybe as an Africa, let me, let me talk about Africa. Mm -hmm. We need to be. Make, uh, we need to make politics, not a god, like a god with a small g. Mm -hmm. We need maybe to make it the least, or the least economic franchise that we have. Okay, because let's now, not make it so big because, for yes, our yes, economy. Yes, because of our interests, that's why we have political parties. <laughs> and, right. and that's democracy. Mm -hmm. And these parties need to be funded by the government, by the exchequer. Okay, okay. Hey, they need to be funded by the government. Yes, I yes, like yes, that. <laughs> okay, so what's our best? Next week, please. We are coming back. Okay. All right. So sorry. Yeah, no, no. Yeah. We, we, we gotta go. We will do that. We will say it. Okay. Yeah. All right. So you've been watching Youth and Politics. My name is Hilda Wadidi. Please do not go anywhere. Next week we are still back here. Oh my God. Hopefully. Yes. God's grace. Thank you guys so much for coming. Thank you for contributing. Give me life. You know. Please don't go anywhere. Y254 channel. Peace.